The Sangre de Cristo Mountains are the southernmost extension of the Rockies. Although not as famous as their cousins to the north, the sub-range still features several impressive summits, some reaching 14,000 feet. Now, in 1970, T. Adams joined a group of campers as they spent the night on one of these slopes in Colorado. He had no idea how much the experience would trouble him for years afterward. When he wrote about the event, he said this, Camping on the western slope of the Sangre de Cristos, northwest of Mount Blanca, and south of the sand dunes, we heard the sounds in 1970. Two or three nights in succession, it cranked up. After midnight and subsided shortly before dawn, it wasn't really loud enough to hear over conversation, but definitely sounded like a motor of some sort, with a suggestion of a dynamo-type whine to it. Others had said that it sometimes seems louder than an ear to the ground. One could easily imagine the sound was coming from beneath the surface, but whether it did or not remains purely speculative. Although he didn't realize it at the time, Adams had unwittingly stepped into an age-old mythology, one describing uncanny noises rising from the unseen depths of our own planet. These are the stories of the mystery sounds from underground. Exactly what makes these noises and whether or not we should be alarmed remains unclear. But one thing is for certain, they have been happening for a very long time and persist to this day. For nearly a century now, our popular culture has drawn our attention skyward. The fictions of our current era focus primarily on threats from above, if not from ourselves, then from extraterrestrials encroaching on our airspace. We believe that our best chance of contacting a non-human intelligence will come from the stars, a goal we might achieve by listening for their transmission or awaiting their craft as they scour the universe in their own search for intergalactic companionship. Few of us really do question what lurks beneath, yet some of our oldest mythologies place entire civilizations below our very feet, somewhere in the depths of the earth where they toil daily towards their unimaginable goals. Over the years, all manner of monsters came to infest this subterranean second earth. Everything from dragons and dwarves to giants, ogres, trolls, fairies, reptilians, even demons and the human dead. For the longest time, this destination had a distinctly spiritual flavor. The realm from which our souls either originated or most often returned to after death. Today's Christian hell found its origins in other subterranean destinations like the Jewish Sheol and the Greek underworld. Mythic underworlds also figure in Tibetan Buddhist belief, Hindu mythology, and the ancient cosmologies of Celtic countries, Russia, Western Europe, and the New World. For example, some of the earliest indigenous traditions from North America indicate that certain tribes came to Earth through fissures in the ground. When the world was new, the Mandan people claimed to have first surfaced from a cave near the Missouri River. The Iroquois speak of a similar origin, and some Hopi elders adamantly insist that their ancestors emerged into this, the fourth world, by ascending underground chambers. These fanciful locations often blend real-world geographical landmarks in their respective mythologies. Counterintuitively, sometimes these spots could be found above ground rather than strictly beneath. In most cases, there was still a subterranean aspect to these sites that kindled the ancient imagination. The Greeks even pinpointed specific caverns by which the underworld could be accessed. Through these portals came and went innumerable spirits, deities, and even individuals of great renown. Seeking enlightenment, a future seer or prophet might descend into the underworld on a journey known commonly as Kudtabasis from which they would emerge knowing the secrets of the universe. Various indigenous cultures describe similar experiences where shamanic initiates receive their instruction in the mystical arts after entering underground spaces or being kidnapped under the earth by supernatural forces. The ideas gained a degree of scientific legitimacy after their proposal by none other than Edmund Haley. In 1692, 
the English astronomer who lent his name to Halley's Comet was trying to reconcile some anomalous magnetic readings when he formulated a controversial hypothesis. Halley proposed the radical notion that the Earth's interior was hollow, spawning centuries of debate. In his model, after 500 miles of rocky crust, the innermost chambers of our planet gave way to a vast hollow chamber filled with two additional concentric shells and a central core. Each shell had its own dedicated atmosphere, separating it from the others, as well as its own magnetic pole and rotational speed. Halley left the room for the possibility that these shells sustained their own ecosystems, either unique biomes or mirror images of life on the surface. Now, over the intervening decades, Halley's ideas blended with those of other thinkers. Some rejected the notion that additional shells were nested inside, instead proposing that a small sun sat at the center of the Earth. Others suggested that the hollow Earth could be accessed via gigantic holes at the North or South Pole. All agreed in their suspicions, however. Something was going on beneath our feet, one of the last few frontiers left for humankind. This idea reached its fictional zenith with Jules Verne's 1864 classic, Journey to the Center of the Earth. More recently, speculation surrounding the hollow Earth has flourished on the internet and risen to prominence once again in the legendary pictures MonsterVerse, which reimagines cinematic titans like King Kong and Godzilla as the oldest original inhabitants of our planet, all hailing from a realm beneath our feet. As with so many other aspects of conspiracy culture, the hollow earth theory also exhibits a gruesome association with the 20th century's worst ideologies. Adolf Hitler's fascination with the occult is well documented, and the Hollow Earth seems to have been no exception. Several highly placed members of the Third Reich adhered to the idea that the inner Earth could be accessed and exploited. Some of the wilder speculations hold that the Germans retreated within our planet, where they continued their tyrannical rule and, wildest of all, started building the UFOs we see in the sky today. This horrendous legacy, notwithstanding, the Hollow Earth idea only predated World War II, but endures long afterward. Any association with history's monsters should not diminish the fact that human beings have always suspected the presence of something other living beneath the Earth. Our oldest beliefs suggest that we are but one of many tenants in the building, as it were, sharing our planet with something just beneath the surface. Older ideas like hell and fairyland seem quaint to modern sensibilities, but that doesn't mean the hollow earth idea is dead. They have given way to more sinister notions. Rumors of covert military bases conducting illicit experiments underground or extraterrestrial outposts waiting for an opportunity to strike from their subterranean hiding places. Those advocating this possibility point to eyewitness, or should I say, ear witness testimony. For centuries, people have reported ominous noises which defy identification. When they are finally pinpointed, witnesses often describe these sounds as welling up from underground in the form of voices or, most commonly, the sound of subterranean machinery. While plenty of accounts happen once and are never heard again, Descriptions of sounds from underground tend to persist in a given area over a long period of time. This detail may offer a clue. Do these sounds represent a stationary civilization beneath the earth, or even some nefarious long-term project being enacted without our knowledge? One of the more interesting cases involves the moo dust noises, a series of terrifying booms heard by Puritans who settled in south-central Connecticut. They were first documented by colonists in 1702. Now, over the years, these noises have been compared to firearms or thunder. Their origin point remains unclear, but many claim that these sounds seem to arise from the very earth itself. The Moodus noise, which continues this day, actually predate European colonization. Unbeknownst to the Puritans, the Wangunk Indians had heard the sounds for generations prior to their arrival. They had long ago named the area mount Tom Macamudas, meaning place of bad noises. From this term, the settlers derived the name Mudas, a village 
found today in East Haddam. The Wenguk believed that these sounds came from their god, Hobomoko, a wrathful deity who presided from a sapphire throne beneath Mount Tom. His voice would issue commandments, either as booms or whispers, leaving the medicine men in a constant scramble to appease him through prayers and sacrifices. The settlers noticed that sometimes the Moodus noises would continue nonstop until abruptly ceasing for years at a time. Then, yet for no apparent reason, activity would begin again. To explain why their frequency increased after colonization, the native population said that their god had been angered by the arrival of white men. The Puritans, on the other hand, believed it was the voice of their own god, full of righteous fury. God Almighty is to be seen and trembled at, and what has been often heard among us, wrote Rev. Stephen Hosmer of Eastern Haddam, Connecticut, in 1729. Continuing, he claimed to have myself heard eight or ten sounds successively and imitating small arms in the space of five minutes. I have, I suppose, heard several hundreds of them within twenty years, some more, some less terrible. Sometimes we have heard them almost every day and great numbers of them in the space of a year. Oftentimes I have observed them coming down from the north, imitating slow thunder, which shakes the house and all that is in them. Now, according to apocryphal legend, the sounds became so infamous that King George himself dispatched an alchemist by the name of Dr. Steele to put an end to these noises. The story goes that Dr. Steele pinpointed a fossil he called the carbuncle that was supposedly the source of the noises. He set up shop in a blacksmith's quarters where he focused his arcane talents on removing the carbuncle from the earth. The residents reported smoke and flames issuing from the shop on a nightly basis until Dr. Steele succeeded. Unfortunately, he claimed that a second, smaller carbuncle would continue disrupting the peace around Mount Tom, or, seen another way, he was full of it. The Moodus noises were still heard sporadically to this day. They most famously live on in the work of acclaimed horror author H.P. Lovecraft, who used them as inspiration for his 1928 short story, The Dunwich Horror. The Moodus noises are confined to a relatively small region in Connecticut. Although the noises themselves are certainly strange, the area does not appear to attract any more supernatural activity than might be found elsewhere. The same cannot be said for other locations, however. It is quite common to find reports of underground sounds in what paranormal aficionados dub window areas. These spots, which can be found all over the planet, seem to display an affinity for unexplained phenomena. Reports in these areas encompass all manner of mysteries, ghost lights, poltergeist activity, UFOs, cryptids, alien big cats, you name it. The late Fordian author John Keel is credited with originating the window area concept. Though the idea appears informally much earlier, over the course of his research, Keel noticed that UFO sightings tended to cluster around significant archaeological sites. Now, these clusters roughly extended in a 200-mile diameter around such locations and seemed to infuse the surrounding region with high strangeness. Keel claimed that each U.S. state supported 2 to 10 windows, including the infamous window area of Mason County, West Virginia, epicenter of the 1966-67 Mothman sightings and once home to countless Indian mounds, many of which have been tragically destroyed. Keel's window area hypothesis has its strengths and its weaknesses, and is not without its own problematic aspects. Regardless, even a superficial review of paranormal literature suggests that the idea has some merit. Anomalies do seem to cluster in certain areas, even if they are not always tied to archaeological sites. Perhaps the most famous window area of the modern era is Sherman Ranch, also known more commonly as Skinwalker Ranch. This property, which sits squarely in the historically haunted Uinta Basin, has been the focus of innumerable supernatural claims since it came to international attention in the mid-1990s. Witnesses report cattle mutilations, unexplained aerial phenomena, cryptids, and, predictably, noises emanating from beneath the earth. After their purchase of the property in 1994, the Sherman family often noted the 
unmistakable sounds of heavy machinery or metal equipment coming from under the earth. One of the more famous examples involves a heavy post hole digger hauled inexplicably into the top branches of a tree. Another time, a friend of the family was helping dig a ditch at the ranch when he was repeatedly approached by the shadow of a man. The shadow would wander into his field of vision and, as he worked, only to stop and watch in silence. Each time, the laborer looked up from the ground and he invariably found an empty field no one could be seen. Recent television programs have reinforced the possibility that something does lurk underneath the Sherman Ranch. Perhaps a top-secret subterranean military facility or even an extraterrestrial base. Strange electrical currents reputedly course through the very soil there. Even as far back as the 1990s, a psychic brought to the ranch sense that a technology that was located underground was generating anomalies on the property. A military base would only serve as a partial explanation for the high strangeness at the ranch. However, indigenous American tribes thought that the Uinta Basin always alluded to some type of intelligence dwelling beneath the ground in this isolated corner of the Southwest, long before settlers ever arrived. Skinwalker Ranch may get all the glory, but another property in Washington State sees as much or more paranormal activity, the Yakima Indian Reservation, home to the Confederated Tribes and Bands of the Yakima Nation sits on the eastern side of the Cascade Mountains. It has always been a hotbed for the activity identical to that found at Skinwalker Ranch, including strange noises whose source cannot always be determined and more often than not seem to originate underground. A report made by fire control officers exemplifies the claims from this area. In September of 1978, the sound of underground turbines or engines was heard at Sopelia Tower at the southern boundary of the Yakima Nation for seven hours, approximately 9 p.m. to 4 a.m. September 3rd to the 4th. The noise was like a turbine or unsynchronized propellers on a multi-engine aircraft. When let outside the lookout station, the fire's lookout dog displayed anxiety and the lookout felt barely perceptible vibrations under her feet when standing on a concrete slab. The lookout said she had heard the same sound during the summer of 1978, but always during the daylight. These sounds were reported regularly by reservation employees, like fire control officer Bill Vogel. Vogel often noticed these turbine-like noises while on patrol in the reservation's remote back canyons, often accompanied by a vibrating sensation beneath his feet. UFO researcher Ken Hunt reported similar sensations on the property heard along the banks of the bordering Columbia River. He compared the noise to the racket generated by a subterranean mining operation. Equally perplexing are inexplicable noises heard above ground which still seem to suggest that something is digging on the reservation. In 1979, a resident and repeat UFO witness regularly heard what he described as the sound of a steel post driver hammering repeatedly into the ground. The noise seemed to originate near an irrigation ditch behind his home. The activity would continue for about 20 minutes at the time before pausing, then resuming later. The witness said that each time he tried to pinpoint the source of the sounds, they would always stop, as if something knew he was drawing close. Although he was curious, his dogs wanted nothing to do with the noises, as they always seemed frightened whenever they began. Like the moodest noise, the sound would cease for long stretches, in this case up to a month before resuming once again, even in midwinter when the ground was frozen. On these occasions, the snow around the irrigation ditch remained untouched, ruling out the possibility that a trespasser had traipsed into his backyard to dig. Residents reported other noises rising up from the earth on the reservation. Whirs, clicks, buzzes, the sound of an idling caterpillar or heavy earth mover, and even the revving of an invisible V8 engine. In addition to this incessant racket, residents on the Yakima Indian Reservation are plagued by a host of other phenomena. UFOs dart through the skies in all shapes and sizes, ranging from zeppelin-like craft to gigantic fiery orange-red orbs which fire spike-like rays of white light. The poltergeist activity and shadow people lurk in the corners of homes. 
Above all, residents on the reservations report regular interactions with Bigfoot. A surprising link can be drawn between Sasquatch sightings and underground sounds. After all, many cryptozoologists speculate that the creatures dwell in the subterranean environments like caverns or caves. Plenty of sightings occur in the vicinity of abandoned mine shafts as well. Most reports describe Bigfoot vocalizations and wood knocks made on the surface. When emanating from below, however, the noises heard in these areas rarely sound like primitive primates living underground. More often than not, they have a frighteningly mechanical quality, calling into question whether or not some sort of technology generates sightings of these large hairy hominids. Over the course of his research, Bigfoot investigator Peter Gatilla noted that sightings often included strange noises he could not account for. These sounds often go unreported by other cryptozoologists who either innocently emit them or deliberately suppress them. At best, they don't think the noises are related, while at worst, they know that such anomalies don't support the idea of a flesh and blood creature. Gatilla wrote this, I've experienced some of these phenomena myself. Strange sounds, usually at night and usually mechanical. Some from everywhere and from underground. These sounds, which often occur in combinations, are described as variously as buzzing, beeping, whirling, whirring, humming, as heavy like diesel locomotive on a steep grade, wheels turning like an idling car motor, like muffled helicopter rotors, explosions, rumbles, popping, and distorted or garbled voices from below ground or in the distance. Gatilla further listed other peculiarities seen during his search for Bigfoot, like strange lights, UFOs, and unusual physical, emotional, or psychic states. He is not the first to have made this connection. In their 1976 book, Bigfoot researchers Ann Slate and Alan Barry describe similar noises. The book outlines numerous expeditions into California's national forests, which saw a spate of Sasquatch activity during the 70s. Participants in these outings soon began to suspect that Bigfoot displayed some sort of underground connection. Some even took their speculation a step further, asserting that the creatures were perhaps aided by someone with sophisticated technology. In one chilling example, the researchers left their tape recorders running overnight, hoping to capture Sasquatch vocalizations in the forest. When they played the tapes back, they were shocked. There were no animalistic grunts, snorts, or howls. Instead, they heard sounds of machinery, those of a generator or hydroelectric plant in operation, coming from beneath the earth. Slate and Barry explain that these noises do not remain consistent over the course of the recordings and instead subtly change as if new gears are set in motion. On another recording, the sounds abruptly end and a robotic voice appears shouting, keep out, we don't want. The voice then fades away. More and more witnesses have stepped forward in recent years to share their accounts of subterranean sounds, not because solo experiences have increased, but because the phenomenon has encroached into urban centers. These incidents leave entire communities scratching their heads as to what exactly is going on. In 2015, in Puebla, Mexico, long, booming sounds echoed through residential neighborhoods in the city of Atkinsingo. They clearly emanated from underground. Officials were unable to identify the sounds, but nonetheless reassured residents that they were safe. This did not prevent a minor panic from ensuing, however. More recently, at 5 a.m. on February 10, 2020, a loud groan issued from below the city streets of Anchorage, Alaska. The noise continued in several bursts, rising in a crescendo before abruptly stopping. The sound was reported throughout the city and well into the countryside, with some hearing it only once and others claiming that it continued for hours on end. Many were awoken from their sleep. One resident described it as almost like a foghorn and screeching metal on metal. Another said it resembled a submarine scraping the bottom of a pool or something. Yet another who claimed to have heard it other times throughout the years compared it to underwater moaning. Some of the most recent accounts of underground sounds surfaced, no pun intended, in late 2021. In September of last year, mysterious subterranean sounds began emanating from a house in Kerala, in India. A slight vibration attended the noises. 
Authorities had investigated, but in the absence of seismic activity, failed to determine a cause. Another home nearby also experienced strange thumps during this time frame, seemingly at random yet strong enough to spill water from pots. In both cases, these sounds were localized, isolated to each dwelling, and were not reported by any neighbors in their homes. This was not the case in Greece. Three months later, an entire neighborhood, located within Thessalonica, was plunged into hysteria as rhythmic subterranean thumps began pounding the streets every night. The noises would begin around midnight, persisting into the early morning hours. There's videos recorded at the time that clearly show their volume increasing as the camera nears the ground, leaving little doubt as to where the sounds were coming from. What they were, on the other hand, is a bit of a mystery. Now, eventually, authorities settled upon a mundane explanation, though plenty were left unsatisfied. Vasilis Melfaz, a geologist at Aristotle University, said, The sound comes from a specific street under which there are water and natural gas pipes. I would conjecture that it's from the drop in water pressure at night. I would rule out underground shifts because such phenomena don't follow a pattern. It is important to remember that many of these frightening sounds do have a mundane origin. Subterranean water sources, buried urban infrastructure, deep ocean currents, and sound refracting above ground can all make it seem as though a legion of dwarves are delving beneath our feet. Sometimes ice on frozen lakes can crack, causing the uncanny sound of large cables clanging together underground. Other times, seismic activity is clearly to blame. Our cities and towns sit precariously atop a network of tectonic plates, and this is, at least sometimes, why we hear ominous rumblings under the earth. The moodest noise, for example, may have been the result of tectonic stress in some cases. The sounds famously ceased for a time after a massive earthquake in 1727. In the 1980s, and in March of 2011, a subsequent earthquake in Connecticut caused the moodest noises to return, strongly implying a connection between the two. But, like everything else in the world, these subterranean sounds don't have a single explanation or answer. None of these can account for engines running underground or gigantic gears slipping into place beneath our feet. Other mysterious noises may be related to these underground sounds. Loud booming skyquakes have been reported for decades, supported today by videos appearing online. While these seem to come from above, they may actually be welling up from underneath or represent the same phenomenon displaced to the skies. Inexplicable mystery hums may also be related, of which there are numerous examples. Now, in these accounts, the residents of a town slowly find themselves driven to the point of madness by noises that drone on incessantly day and night as they conduct their lives. Many victims report they are unable to sleep in the face of such torture. Such was the case in Hythe, Southampton. In 2013, dozens of residents began seeking medical attention, suspecting they had come down with tinnitus. In reality, the entire town had noticed that their evenings were filled with a low-frequency hum. I thought I was going mad at first, said one resident. I hear it every night unless it's windy or raining. Another victim explained that her family regularly experienced a humming noise at night. A few times we put it down to a neighbor's washing machine or dishwasher, but it's happening so frequently that we know it's not the case. It's a really low-pitched sound that literally pulsates through the house. The official explanation left much to be desired. You see, authorities claim that the sound was caused by a male midshipman fish who let loose with a low droning hum during mating season. Come on, come on. The call simultaneously attracts females and challenges potential rivals. The long wavelength of the vocalizations, scientists argue, allowed the noise to permeate the entire community. Notably, this was the only possible explanation offered, meaning that if the fish weren't to blame, the government had no rationalization for the hum. Oh no, they had no idea what was going on. The weak explanation offered for the hum speaks to how little scientists can definitively declare regarding mystery sounds. Similar anomalies have troubled oceanographers for decades now. Numerous loud, booming noises recorded in the world's oceans remain unaccounted for. 
recordings obtained from one of the world's deepest holes left geologists baffled as well. A hole on the border of Germany and the Czech Republic stretches well over five miles deep, and in 2013 became the site of a project carried out by a Dutch artist of the name Laura Kiva. Her wish was to record sounds from the lowest point she could access for an art installation. At first, the request was met with disinterest. She was told that all her recordings would come back empty, if they could even withstand the trip. The bottom of the hole sees temperatures in excess of 500 degrees Fahrenheit. And deterred, she obtained a geophone. The device could not only withstand the temperature, but included an ultrasonic sensor to pick up sound waves below the threshold of human hearing. She lowered the equipment and retrieved the recordings, processing them through software to bring them within audible range. To her delight and surprise, the recordings were filled with unsettling sounds, resembling everything from rolling thunderclouds to onrushing tornadoes. All the hair on my arms stood up straight, and if I hear it now again, after many times, it still has the same effect on me, she said. Her art project was a resounding success. Scientists cannot explain what she recorded. The sounds aren't obviously recognizable as seismic, leaving them to theorize that perhaps it's simply electronic feedback from the geophone itself. In short, mysteries still exist, both in the skies, above, and in the ground below. Subterranean anomalies long ago caught the attention of the UFO community, who speculate the entire alien race might thrive somewhere beneath our feet. To their credit, a large number of sightings describe aerial anomalies entering caves, oceans, and what appear to be bases embedded within mountainsides. What's more is there's no shortage of alien abduction featuring underground settings, ranging from dank, gloomy caverns to sophisticated clinical facilities. While this could serve as its own topic, there are also numerous eyewitnesses who claim that seismic disturbances erupt in the wake of UFO sightings. In some cases, these might actually be earth lights, a natural, if rare, luminescent phenomenon generated by piezoelectrical stress before, during, or after earthquakes. Since earth lights are so rare and difficult to reproduce, we are left wondering if something more miraculous is going on. Such may have been the case in a May 30th, 1987 sighting in Puerto Rico. Residents reported an enormous red fireball that buzzed above a lagoon. The next day, the southwestern portion of the island territory was racked by a powerful tremor and sounds of explosions filled the air. Explosions which seemed to originate from within the earth. To make matters more complex, terrestrial government facilities exist underground. It's not a conspiracy theory, it's a fact. Some estimate that worldwide over 10,000 such facilities have been built. Their presence raises innumerable questions surrounding why they are down there and, more importantly, what are they doing? The past five years have shown beyond a shadow of a doubt that the world's government, the United States in particular, are heavily interested in the UFO mystery. Not that there really was much of a doubt to begin with. As the topic of extraterrestrial life becomes more and more popular, we are constantly called upon to turn our eyes to the skies. But hey, folks, don't be fooled. This might be the oldest trick in the book, the first lesson taught by magicians. As the left hand busies itself, pay attention to what the right hand is doing, also known commonly as sleight of hand, because as you watch the skies, keep an ear to the ground. You might hear something unsettling. But more importantly, I want to know what you guys think. Are there strange sounds going on underneath the earth? I want to know what your opinion is. Be sure to go ahead and drop it in the comments below. I want to know. As always, guys, if you're new to the channel and this is your first time, go ahead and slap that like and subscribe button for more content just like this. I love you all. Keep an open mind, and I'll check you guys out in the very next episode.